and then we have to night to start pizza next week to attend them in a feast. But I why no China Zimbabwe? No China. You are quitting. I want okay. okay. yeah. That's you look it, eh? 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 You look I'm so going Right, 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 this is not within my right. This is not within your what? Can I go to work and go and this? No, one is a go and go. Right, we are. We are. We are. My people, my people, comrades and friends, welcome to another episode of The Week with me, Comrade Faso. And it's been another crazy week. Bill Chiangwa said if you're opposition, I'll kish. The MDCT joined forces with ED to mutilate the constitution, and we caught up with MDC Alliance's MP for Wange Central, Daniel Molokele, for an exclusive interview. But first, this. Notwithstanding what the African Development Bank may say negatively, or what the IMF may say negatively, or what those namesayers may say negatively, we are Zanubi of kids. We support Zanubi of nothing else. We support Mnangagwa, nothing else. We are coming to Bulawayo. Me, Passion, Mike, Chimombe. You know what I mean? We will give you the best education about how to make money. Yeah. And one, Mamu Ajikota, no, you know what I mean? Hey, Chi, Aaka, Aufun, Aujge. Fundo, you could tell maybe the umu we want to know as you Twitter, you could tell us in a basal. A kuna muna and a batwita, a little to eat a man. Seven I Mario and Babuzan, no good Zan, do you know what to do in a movie? Which are called a kuna mumu. A kuna chino, you put him that opposition and occupa other than Zanupiev. Zanupiev, you know, tell you it. There you have it, comrades. For those of you going on Twitter, reading too much tweets from Hopewell and Fazai, thinking you'll get rich, never forget and smile. Only Zanpief can make you rich. How can the opposition make you rich? I mean, you heard it from Fidzaka. Simple math. Zanu equals bank. Opposition equals zero. Saka, so join them Sangano and get a permit to displace people and mine Goride. I mean, why are you against the movement in the first place? In an ongoing attack on our constitution, this week Zimbabwe's Senate passed Constitutional Amendment Bill No. 2, removing a clause from the constitution about electing vice presidents. The bill will also extend the tenure of senior judges who will now be appointed directly by the Prez himself, as opposed to going through the public interview process, which is the case now. Transparency and accountability out of the window. And guess who has to now decide whether this bill becomes law? Yep, 
this guy. No, so, sorry, not, not that guy. I mean, this guy. The bill was passed by 65 senators, including 11 from the MDCT and was opposed by 10 other opposition lawmakers. The bill required a two-thirds majority or 54 votes in order to pass through the Senate. But Daddy wants you to know that he didn't vote for it. No, no, no. He's too clever. He got his MDCT colleagues to vote for him. Mr. Mandura, what's, what's your take on, on the Senate uh, result that has just come out? Well, um, it was uh, largely to be expected uh, uh, because uh, well, the MDC was opposed to uh, the two clauses. The you see, he's not the one. It's not his fault. You do not make money unless you don't have a vision 2050. Hey, 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 And just when you thought it was all done, the Hurmet apparently said, my amendments NDC Alliance's Deputy Chairperson, Job Sikala, claimed that after Constitutional Amendment Bill Number 2 passes, that ZANU-PF wants to set an age limit for presidential aspirants at 52 years. Coincidentally, Nelson Chamisa would be 45 years old in 2023 and thus miraculously would not be allowed to contest the elections. Sikala tweeted, ED's regime is plotting to amend the Constitution and the Electoral Act once more to pick the presidential age to 52. Their target is the People's President Nelson Chamisa and I. BT will be barred via a provision to be inserted in the Patriotic Bill. ZANU-PF Chief Whip Bukurai Togarepi said the amendments were not specific to Chamisa but to the office, which Chamisa just happens to want to occupy. And the constitutional amendment is not targeted at an individual or organization, but it is there to deal with some gaps in our constitution. And I think there's a large Chamisa-sized gap in the constitution that needs to be fixed. 
and a car bit sized hole. We caught up this week with MDC Alliance MP for Wange Central, Daniel Molokele, about the invasion of Wange by Chinese mining companies, his thoughts on the Constitutional Amendment Bill Number 2, and if he would want to have dinner with Morgan Komichi. Comrades and friends, today we are joined by the MDC Alliance MP for Wange Central, Honorable Molokele. Honorable Molokele, thanks for joining us on the week. Yeah, welcome. Also, thanks to you, Azima Kamba TV, for inviting me today. Thanks, boss. So we're going to get straight into it. Uh, you know, we've sent our, 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 our Magamba TV team out there to find you and we found you. And so the, the first burning question we've got to ask you is, is what's going on in Wangi? I mean, this is your constituency. We see that there are these increased reports of, of, of Chinese mining in Wangi. Uh, so why are communities angry and how are you supporting this resistance? Yes, my constituency is built on the coal mine field. Uh, so there's a lot of coal in Wange. So more companies in recent years have come. The original company is Wange Colliery. That's the company that raised me up to where I am today. But these days there are new companies and one of them is this new uh, investor that is trying to do explorations in Dinde, which is part of the rural wards in my constituency. And uh, the residents are not happy with the process. They feel they are not properly consulted. So as the office of the MP, we are supporting them in line with the spirit of the 2013 constitution that there should be devolution of government. Power rests to the people, the local communities. So that's where we are in Wange at the moment. Also, there is a lot of coal in Wange. Why do you want to, to start a coal mine inside the village uh, without even consulting the local communities? Mm -hmm. Okay, so and, uh, another thing that, I, that was really on my mind and I wanted to ask you about, I mean, you, of course, you're just coming from a parliamentary session now. Uh, what, what are your views on Constitutional Amendment Bill Number 2? Uh, and why are you comrades in MDC Alliance so angry with your, your, your former comrades in MDC T? I mean, they said they voted for the Constitutional Amendment Bill because of Nyaye, Women's Quarter, Youth Quarter, Chi Chi Chi, and Dagi himself, he says he didn't even vote for it. So what's the problem, boss? I think everyone who follows Zimbabwean politics knows that this constitution is, is a co-product of the 2013 referendum. We consulted the people of Zimbabwe, and we can't say seven years later we are changing the same constitution without even implementing it. We need to align the laws of this country to the new constitution, not to start amending this constitution. So I'm 100% opposed to constitutional amendment number one and amendment number two. They are going to take us backwards. They are going to create an imperial president. They are going to reduce the independence of parliament and the independence of the judiciary. And they are going to increase the power of the executive. That means politics is now overriding the, the situation in the country and it's bad news for Zimbabwe when you talk about democracy. So are we creating, as some people are saying, is this creating a dictatorship? We are, we are definitely going back to the 1987 era when Joshua and Mugabe united and we changed the constitution in 1998 to create an executive president. Those gains were reversed in 2013, but now it is going to benefit. It's going to be an imperial president, more of a monarch than a, an absolute monarch or than an, a, an elected politician. Mm -hmm. Scary times. Well, it brings me on to, uh, on to another question about our, 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 our economy. You know, our, our Zimbabwean economy has been in the doldrums. It's been dead for many years. It's been written off. But do you think there's now hope because we've got luminaries like Phil Chiangwa and Passion Java who are reviving the Affirmative Action Group and they're launching up Aona Cash, Chi Chi Chi. I mean, do you think maybe Zimbabwe can be saved by the Mbingas? That is clearly a side show, a Muppet show. I think we, when we are trying to resolve the economic crisis of this country, we really need to take uh, the, the situation more seriously. So th that is just entertainment. When you talk about resolving the crisis in Zimbabwe, rebuilding our economy, we need something much more serious. So don't even put your hope on that process. Only a few people will benefit, uh, boot-licking people, but the rest of Zimbabweans will continue to suffer in poverty. But Phil Chang has even said on that video, he said, if you, if you join ZANU-PF, you'll be fine. If you join ZANU-PF, if you join the Mzangano, you'll even get a, a, a tender, you might get a permit to mine gold. That's the reason why Zimbabwe is having problems today. Only a few people are benefiting due to their political networks. 
So if you are connected to the ruling party, you could benefit. But the, 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 the issue here is not about a few individuals eating from the national cake. It's about the millions of Zimbabweans. Remember, we've got millions who've been forced out of the country because of this same problem. We want people to come up with solutions that empower more Zimbabweans, not a few Zimbabweans. And that's why I'm not going to be impressed by Pashin Java and Philip Changwa and the affirmative Asian groups. They are just uh, political opportunists and they are not serious in terms of resolving the problems of our people. Honorable Moloke, I've got a question for you. Where is Nelson Chamisa? I mean, he recently did a call with us. You know, it, he did a Zoom call with us, the citizens of Zimbabwe, where he was promising some big uh, convergence, chi chi chi. And then, then I think he ran out of data because we haven't heard from him since. I mean, did Dagi also take over his Zoom account? <laughs> uh, President Nelson Chamisa is alive and well, and he still prays and hopes for a new Zimbabwe. He's our leader. He's by far the most popular politician in the country today. And we have entrusted our hope for the future with him. Uh, when he appeared in the press, he was uh, briefly to announce the launch of the Citizen Convergence for Change, which is a new political alignment where the original MDC, together with civil society partners, together with um, other concerned stakeholders who are worried about the future of this country, are converging to say we need a new Zimbabwe. We need a new political trajectory for this country. We need to fight for democracy for this country. So I don't think uh, Senator Monzora is taken over his Zoom account, uh, but uh, he will make another public appearance soon. The most important thing is that as our leader, he has given us the direction and he's also done a big speech. I don't know whether you remember, he did the State of the Nation address where he spoke about Agenda 21 and clarified the five points of focus for this year. So I think as a leader, he has put it out there in public what we're doing for 2021 uh, with so much clarity. I think at the end of the day, I like it that uh, President Chamisa has become less talk because sometimes it's, it's not worth it just talking and talking. We need a more practical approach to resolving our situation. So I'm happy that he talks less and hopefully he can start to act more. Okay, Saka, you're, you're saying to us, I think the data, like he's still got some data, he'll be doing a call with us soon, eh? <laughs> you know that uh, he's the former minister of ICT, he's the one who made SIM cards freely available in Zimbabwe when he was the minister. He's one of the most techno savvy politicians in the country. Uh, you, If you work closely with him, you'll be surprised how much advanced he is when it comes to technology and so mm -hmm. on. So he's, he's definitely clued up in that area. No, that's fine. I'll, I'll WhatsApp him just now, just to find out uh, if he's still got that. Idea. So, boss, now a, a, a hypothetical question. If you could go out to eat a fantastic, luxurious meal of Sazani Maguru, uh, and you could choose between one of these people, who would it be and why? Phil Chiangwa, a.k.a. Pizza Phil, a.k.a. Uncle Pizza, or... Morgan Komichi, a.k.a. your former comrade, a.k.a. a current occupant of Harvest House. Which of those, which of those two would you go out for such an animal group with and, uh, and, uh, and why? If I had a choice, I wouldn't want to have any kind of meal with these two fellows. Thank you. I respect them as fellow Zimbabweans, but I don't think I have anything in common with them. But for the purpose of your question, I don't think I really have a lot to chew with the uh, Honorable Chiangwa. But uh, with Senator Komich, I think it would be good for me to have a conversation with him about the, the, the way he understands the political situation and the way forward. Because I, I definitely was very sad and disappointed uh, last year when he, um, he, he left the MTC Alliance and the political direction that he took. And uh, today he's completely isolated from the, the popular masses of Zimbabwe and his political career. I've got a lot of question marks about him. So I feel very sad for him after serving the people so loyally of Zimbabwe for 20 years plus. And today he's become a, a pale shadow of what he used to be uh, as our leader. So I feel sad. I would try to understand him how he feels. Recently in an interview, Nelson Chamisa said he wouldn't allow opportunistic people to be in the MDC alliance anymore. So I'm asking, why were they there in the first place? I mean, you've got, you know, you've got people accused of massive corruption, like former mayor uh, of Harare, Herbert Gomba, who's in the courts at the moment. And, and secondly, this issue of, of opportunists and all these defections, 
all these defections, are they not actually going to affect your chances uh, in 2023? I, I watched the interview that the president did last week in Bulawayo, and from what I understand, uh, he confirmed that the party has learned from the previous candidate selection processes that were mostly centered on the structures of the party, and that th those processes allowed some of these characters that uh, we have seen. Uh, but as a way forward, the party has learned, and now it is saying the process will be more robust, more rigorous, and it is now proposing that uh, we involve other community stakeholders. He, he, for example, at Wange Central, it's not just the MDC Alliance party structures that vote to make me a member of parliament, but the, it's a broader community. So the MDC Alliance is saying, let's get a candidate who not just passes the test of popularity within the party structures, but also has got some kind of competence within the local community. And that kind of person is likely to be much more sound and, 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 and committed and dedicated cadre because he commands or she commands the respect of the community beyond the party structures. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Comrade Molokele, uh, there's, there's, there's also quite a big issue that I'm, I'm sure is on the minds of many MPs. Are you not scared of being recalled? <laughs> is, is that not keeping you awake at night, every, every night when you go to sleep and you fail to sleep because you're like, hey, I have a mangwan. Uh, I was one of the first MPs uh, and now one of the few MPs who went in public and stated their position on Twitter, on Facebook, on WhatsApp. Uh, when the recall started that um, this is the time to make a choice. You can't be in the center. You have to choose left or right. And I personally uh, put my position in no uncertain terms. And that position, I keep it up to this day. My position is that uh, my leader is Advocate Nesen Chamisa. My political party leadership is the one that was elected in Gwere in May 2019. So whatever else around the, 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 the corona judgment that occurred in March last year and the consequences like recalls, um, I think I have to face the consequences. So I'm more than ready to be recalled. I do not have a sleepless night about it. In fact, I've had enough time to put my house in order in terms of the way forward, uh, in terms of my alternative paths. I can do uh, my legal practice. I can... Uh, also apply for other jobs. So I'm not going to have a sleepless night uh, about being recorded. I think what I have a sleepless night about is the future of the millions of Zimbabweans who are stranded in this country, where there is no clear plan about resolving the social crisis, the, pol the political crisis, the economic crisis. That can make me sleepless. That where are we going as a nation? Remembering that there are already millions of us who are stranded in the diaspora. We need this country to be up and running. That makes me sleepless. I am ready to be recalled today. If anyone wants to recall me, they should feel free. Okay, so we're not going to see you at a defection ceremony any anytime soon. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm not going to join ZANU-PF. I'm not going to join MDCT. I'm going to be the last man standing. If Advocate Nesen Chamisa sells out, I'm going to remain with the people of Zimbabwe. I will replace Advocate Nesen Chamisa if he sells out. But I'm, I can assure the people of Zimbabwe that I'm going to remain standing. I'm not going to go to, to MDCT. I'm not going to go to ZANPF. It's not going to happen. But Rans, I'm going to go to ZANPF. I'm going to go to ZANPF. I'm going to go to Do you know that if you want to eat, if you want to eat, go to ZANPF. That's the right part to join. If you want to eat, that's the right part. You can join Affirmative Action Group. You can join Zanpi of Youth League. You can join Zanpi of uh, Women's League. You can become a Korokosa. That You can become, what's the other word, Mbinga. That's it. It's fine. But if you want to serve the people of Zimbabwe, then get serious. Avoid Zanpi. Avoid it at all costs. Right. <laughs> Okay, I'm going to ask you some multiple choice questions. This is very easy. If you if you passed your ZJC, you know, if you're saying you're a lawyer, I'm sure you passed your ZJC, maybe your whole level, maybe even A level. It's like a multiple choice, very easy. I'll ask you a question. It's just either or, and you say which. You don't have to explain why or anything. You just say the name. Okay, so the first in this multiple choice. Green Bombers or Highlanders? Highlanders. <laughs> <laughs> Love Mo Majaivana or Calvin? Love Mama Jaivana. Mm -hmm. 
Jonathan Moyo or Etokolosh? <laughs> None of the above. <laughs> you only have one choice for saying. Etokolosh. <laughs> Option against Moyo. Uh, okay, you chose Etokolosh. Etokolosh or Etokolosh? Tokolosh, Tokolosh boss. <laughs> okay, I'll choose Jonathan Moyo. I'm scared of Tokolosh. <laughs> I should be more scared of Jonathan Moyo. No, I'll no, choose no, Jonathan Moyo. You can imagine. <laughs> boss, boss, my, my okay. My final question before you before you before you wrap up. What's the way forward? Because we know that the Parliament captured, judiciary captured, Zek. Captured, state media captured. So what's the way forward? Twitter say. I I think I'm facing this question for the second time in my life. In 1999, I was the president at the University of Zimbabwe. I was uh, the vice president of Zinas, and the students were worried about the future. And that question was popping up every day. 1999, and what happened that year is exactly what should happen this year also. that all the concerned stakeholders all concerned progressive stakeholders of this country from all various backgrounds should converge they should realign once again we should not look towards a political party anymore we should actually have that citizen convergence for change so that the way we set up the mdc 1999 is exactly how we should do it now bring the labor bring the students bring everyone else who says uh we need a new zimbabwe we are not here with the direction so we need a convergence and that will create a mass movement and that will then challenge the status quo because why is zanu pf having a field day it's because it's it's sure that it doesn't have any clear political challenge anymore so we need to go back to the basics go back to a united broad based movement and we will shake zanu pf again all the concessions that we are we are losing including those from the 2013 constitution are now happening because zanu pf is feeling arrogant you know the the the, the weakness of monopolies when you are a monopoly without competition you become arrogant and from a political point of view zanu pf with the support of the new political party that was set up last year zanu pf is become a political monopoly in, in parliament and um we can see what happened with constitutional amendment 1 and 2 that uh they are almost the invisible they have got what we call a super majority so as a way forward let's go back to the basics so that uh, in 2023 we reduce this two thirds majority we reduce uh the other super majority that we are talking about we need a new alignment politically like what you did in the year 2000 we managed mm-hmm. to stop zanu pf whether it was the constitutional referendum whether it was the election themselves uh the new party and the city to work so let's go back to the people let's reorganize on the ground let's start again like we did in 99 and i'm sure we can change the direction of this country mm-hmm. okay comrade well i wish you i wish you well in your endeavors to uh, get this convergence going uh, and just to just to say thank you for joining us uh, on the week comrade Molo. In reassuring news this week, we heard from Zanu PF's number one team swimmer, Kirsty Coventry, that she will revamp the Green Bombers. Yes, our youth sports, arts and culture minister has said that her ministry plans to revitalize the National Youth Service, giving it a whole new look to ensure that it meets international best practice. Saka, no more random beatings and torture. No. From now on, our Green Bombers will be known for their Olympic style backstroke breaststroke and elite ice skating. Hooray! The Golden Girl went on to say, for the ministry, we'll be focusing on youths from the ages of 15 to 35, where we will provide them with life education skills, trainings, and workshops. Do kunonzi kusanitizer my green bomba. In my favorite news of the week, we learned the reason why our roads are so bad. Because the money is being spent on kujima. Yes, parliament was told that despite splashing thousands of dollars on home gym equipment for its workers our roads agency Zinara continued to pay gym membership fees for those very same workers at various gyms Berengwa East legislator Marco Reiza who's part of the public accounts committee that investigated Zinara said the company was paying the gym companies on behalf of the employees but at the same time the company was also buying the gym equipment for the same employees so there was double dipping there in any i don't agree with the mp 
Because I've had so many times of corruption where my dad and my tumbu want to build my mansion, they want to buy my Bentleys, chi chi chi. Why is it? But these Zinara comrades were being corrupt for the sake of their good health and suburbs. I mean, who needs functioning roads when you can have Mamonia patogate? In the face of ongoing attacks on our constitution and attempts to set up an all powerful presidency, civic organizations have set up the resist dictatorship movement. They hosted an e-rally this week against constitutional amendment bill number two. Join the movement, make yourself heard, and let's save our country. Follow Zim Rights on social media for more information. Thanks for joining us on the week. Follow Magama TV on social media. I've been Comrade Fatso, you have been the people. This has been the week. Thank you. Abauna Kish for tech.